watching MBC. Good night, St. Lucia, and welcome to another episode of Police Insight. I am your host, Sergeant Zachary Hippolyte of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. Um, I'd like to say good night to everyone, especially uh, my commissioner, our commissioner, Mr. Milton Daisy. Uh, I'd like to say good night to our deputies, uh, Mr. O'Brien, Ms. Pelius. The rest of the executive, Miss Silly, good night to you. Mr. Shalry, good night to you. Uh, Mr. Nicholas, how are you doing? Good night to you. All Gazette officers, Superintendent Charge of the North, Mr. Um, Thomas, how are you doing? Good night to you. Um, Mr. James, down in the South, Superintendent Charge of the South. You know, most times I forget the South. ASP Victory. Okay, and uh, Mr. Victory, ASP Victory, how are you doing? You know, I just forget the guys in the South. So good night to you all. As a matter of fact, I need to invite you guys up here. Uh, or maybe if we can go down, I don't know, South and have a seven, seven <laughs> edition of Police Inside. I don't know how that's possible. Uh, inspectors, sergeants, corporals, constables, both senior and junior special police constables, good night to you, special reserve police officers, uh, peace officers, city police, ex-police officers. I know those of you who have moved on, hopefully to greener pastures, good night to you. Um, our brothers and sisters in law enforcement, fire department, uh, customs, those are the bodily correctional facility, those are the ports. I'd like to say good night to you, security officers and everybody who has at the forefront of their thinking law enforcement and a peaceful country and nation. I'd like to say good night to you. Um, without further ado, I will introduce my guest. You know, usually I go through some topics before I introduce my guest, but my guest, my esteemed guest, the topics that I'm going to speak about, he, he, he just fits in right there with our pre-topics before we go into what we're going to be discussing. So, without further ado, I'm not a stranger to Police Insight. I'd like to welcome um, newly promoted Assistant Superintendent of Police, Curtis Roberts, who is still the current Vice President of the Police Welfare Association. Up, up to midnight. Up to midnight. <laughs> To midnight tonight. Good night to you, sir. Good night, good night, good night, Saint Lucia. Uh, good evening to all. Um, I think Zach, you probably shout out everybody. I was supposed to have yes, given yes. a shout tonight, tonight so far. So um, I'm here. I'm happy to be here. And yeah, we could get down to business like you always say. Of course. Good night, my brother. And um, <laughs> um, congratulations on your recent promotion. Thank you. Thank to, you. To, to assistant superintendent of police. As a matter of fact, you know, I was doing a little um, research. Um, ASP and um, you, you joined the organization as a special police constable am I correct? Yes I did back and in 97 in 97 yes. as a special police constable and today you're an assistant superintendent of police um, I might be wrong I might be wrong but I believe you are the only thus far and, and a colleague of ours could call me message me 7200401 if in case you know you have some other information but I believe you might just be the the only ASP, sorry, that, that, that started as an SVC, I believe, I'm not too sure. Has um, anyone told you anything like that? Well, yes, um, I am, I'm also of that belief. Uh, you also if, that I, belief. Yes, <laughs> if, if I'm wrong, yeah. Yes. Yeah, it would be nice for someone to at least call, call and make that correction. I mean, yeah, just in case, but I believe correction. you are. Yes, um, yeah, and it just goes to show, um, no matter where you start in life, it's, it's all about um, your determination, your drive, the Almighty, if you're spiritual, you know, and you just got to do what you got to do. So welcome, ESP. Tonight, we're going to, the, the main topic, ladies and gentlemen, um, is that of, um, well, welfare issues, especially we're about to have our elections, um, police association, 
or Police Welfare Association, as as we are accustomed of saying it, elections tomorrow in the organization. And so we'll be talking about the, the, the procedure, the processes that's involved. Also, we will hear from some of the candidates. Some of them have sent in um, um, a little audio, whereas others, I believe, are waiting to call in. So that's what we're going to do. Um, but before we get into the meat of the matter, ASB, um, join me as I, as I do my pre-meat um, 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 of the matter topics. <laughs> um, ASB, guess what? We have some prom we had some promotions recently in the the Royal Silicon Police Band. Are you aware? Uh, well, yes. I was just recently told that um, there were some promotions. I don't have a full list of the persons. Neither do I. Yeah, but I would have known about a, a, a couple persons. A one, couple thing, persons one, 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 okay. thing, one thing that stood out to me, though, was that for the very first time in the history of the police band that there is a female supervisor and i think um, that's that that's pretty much commendable i mean you know um i'm one of the guys i'm one of the guys who like records you know right yeah so we have somebody else breaking yes. a, another record so yeah uh, yeah and that's really amazing and ladies and gentlemen i um we do have some pictures of of this officer she is glennis Joseph, Glennis Joseph, um, uh, just yesterday she was a WPC 98 and now she has been promoted to the rank of corporal. And what is so amazing about this, ladies and gentlemen, is that this is the very first time in the history of the existence of the Royal Sinusha Police Ban um, that a female has been promoted. Yes, and the, the, the Royal Central Police Ban has been there for 74 years, ASP. 74 years. And yes. Miss Joseph is a 30-year so, yeah. veteran. Yeah. And she has finally broken that glass ceiling that for some reason or whatever, which I cannot go into, maybe, maybe one day I'll have a, um, um, the director of music here or somebody to explain. But um, we have a very first female police band officer being promoted how do you feel about that i feel i feel very i feel i feel good about it um, yeah. kudos to her i mean like i said um, a lot of a lot of what we heard about the police force back mm -hmm. in the day sounded a bit sexist to us <laughs> and um we are we are here today and um i've not met miss uh, miss joseph personally to congratulate her, but um, yeah. I hope she's listening. Congratulations to you, Miss Joseph. I hope she's listening, um, yes. And it's a, it's, it's a good feeling. And I, and I remember asking that question sometime in, at, at a meeting with the band uh, sometime in January this year. Um, I said to them, I was saying to them, to me, I've been a police officer for almost 24 years and I've not seen, I've never seen a female supervisor. Has there ever been one? And, well, yes, the, the obvious answer was no, but um, I don't know. I think I kind of roll a, a few heads. Well, <laughs> no, no, not no, 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 roll, but sh shook a few heads. You yeah, know, yeah. Shook a few I, 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 think I, I think I got that strange look. Like, okay, mm. you mean that's what you come here talking about? A woman being a supervisor? I don't know. Yeah. If that, I don't know if that's what it meant. Yeah, I mean, but that's, um, it, that's what you, that's um, the perception you're saying. You know, like I always say to my friend Cameron Law, I hope you're listening, Cameron. Um, <laughs> I'm responsible for what I see. <laughs> You're responsible for your yes. interpretation. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, but I think it's a, I think it's a really good feeling. Um, congratulations to her. Oh yes, and definitely. I, I have the opportunity. You know, um, um, the, the the pandemic brought us together. Um, me being in charge of the northern medical facilities, and that's where um, my my working relationship with Miss Joseph started. It has been an amazing um, working relationship. She's definitely she's a professional takes her work so seriously so i'm so happy that she has been promoted so miss joseph big up yeah, yeah. uh we also had some uh, the, what i know off the top of my head um former president of the police oh yes uh, yes mr, mr. martin, martin james. james i only learned of his promotion tonight actually yeah yes uh, yeah he's now a sergeant of police you know so big up to you mr james big up to you congratulations congratulations brother, brother martin yeah brother <laughs> yes. martin big up and also uh, uh, uh the all of the top of my head i'd like to also congratulate um well just yesterday he was special police constable 32 billy and now he has been promoted 
to Police Constable 1. I think the number is 48. So Police Constable 1, Billy, from the band, also congratulations to from you, my the, brother. The All band. the others, sorry we don't have the list, but if any of you out there are listening, you know, and you want to send me the message of the, the others who were promoted, no problem, 7200-401. Um, we, all, we are live on NBC television, ladies and gentlemen. We are also live um, on the streaming platform, NBC um, Television St. Lucia. That's on Facebook. So those of you who are currently logged in uh, I'm in the chat, I'll be checking you guys in a while. Um, what else? Um, the Minister of National Security, Senator the Honorable um, Woman Gil Francis, um, from what I, well, not from what I understand, actually saw it in the news that he, he tested positive for the COVID-19 virus, ASV, yeah. um, and also his wife. So on behalf of the team here at Police Insight and by, and by extension also the Royal Central Police Force, the rider organization, we wish you, sir, you and your wife and your family a speedy recovery. Yes, and also noting that his wife is one of our members. Yes. Definitely, yes, that's, sure. that's yes. Sergeant Francis. Sergeant Francis, <laughs> yes. Yes, Sergeant. So uh, speedy recovery, guys. Um, I, uh, I've never... Um, we're about to have the second phase, the second rollout of the of the vaccination. Oh, yes. Yeah, so I, I had mine uh, at the end of February. So hopefully next week I should be getting my second dose. How about you? Have you been vaccinated? Yet? Yeah, that's supposed to smell like. <laughs> <laughs> I said, yes, we didn't you put, get you put, you put, you put me on the spot, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's move on. Um, also, ESP, um, I mean, there's a press release that was about four days ago. That's right, Friday, April 16th, uh, according to, the, to our organization, where a contingent um, from the Royal Central Police Force and the Sinusha Fire Service left Port Castries for St. Vincent and the Grenadines. There, the team will provide support as the neighboring island faces challenges from the ongoing volcanic eruptions. The officers are deployed for a period of 14 days. In the first instance, uh, the police marine unit has aided in delivering much needed supplies, such as water, to the island and will continue to do so as long as necessary. Anyone wishing to contribute towards the national effort can donate supplies to the National Emergency Management Organization. And I believe, um, Shane, do we have um, the photos that was released by the organization of the group of heroic men, I believe we do. So, you know, I'd like to say big up um, to our police officers, our fire officers who um, have been deployed to St. Vincent ESV. Yes, um, big up to these guys. Um, I know something is not always nice and easy just mm -hmm. in your family or, or whatever, all the business you have mm -hmm. behind that amount of time because it's 14 days in the first instance we don't know how long um, the situation is going to last um, and how long these guys are going to be out there but it's 14 days in the first instance and, <laughs> and, let's, and, and you know, yes, <laughs> let's hope let's hope um, <laughs> let, let's hope they're comfortable enough with yeah. the length of time that they're out there i mean we laugh, we, we laugh at it but it's a serious situ it's, a, yeah, it's a serious situation the um, reason why we, the reason why you heard the chuckle ladies and gentlemen you see at ours at our service the police force is such a dynamic organization and you must be very disciplined and professional and, and you need to understand that though sometimes you may be given a timeline you, you you cannot you cannot just assume that that's the timeline that will actually be given to you things happen yeah. you know um so definitely being a police officer is 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 something else isn't it yeah and you, see, and you see you see the photos of these guys they're out there all smiling but it's not a joy ride it's not a joy you ride know, they know they're going out there to work to work yeah, not, away from the not, family yeah. yeah away from the family their usual colleagues and, yeah and, and friends um the yeah. usual environment the usual environment yeah, the comfort of their Street homes etc yeah. yeah so yeah. um yeah it's not as nice as it as it looks um, behind the smiles <laughs> I tell you big up to them okay so I think this is the time where we finally get to the meat of the matter um, ESP um, have you told Sunisha a little bit about yourself not as yet because there are, not everyone knows you, you know um, I think I I, well I think by now um, they would have known enough um, <laughs> I guess Zach could have said my name earlier Curtis Roberts mm -hmm. um, assistant superintendent of police um, well up to midnight tonight, um, I'm still the 
vice president of the Police Welfare Association. So, um, That's why, where, what where, else, where yes. are you from? Where, what community? Well, I'm from, I'm from the community of Miku. Okay. Yes. Um, Jamiku. Yes, Mose oh. Jamiku. Okay. I, I still live down there. Still live down there. Excellent. Yes. Um, yes. I've, in terms of being a member of the Police Welfare Association, I think I've been the chairman of each branch board, with the exception of the inspectors' branch board. Interesting. Yes. So I've been in there um, for a while. Um, when you look at our current executive, I think I'm the one who's been most senior in terms of the, mm -hmm. the length of time that we that I've spent. I thought it was me, but I actually um, found you, you know, there. Yes, right, yeah, <laughs> yes. I've been yes, there yes. as a constable, corporal, yes, sergeant. Yes. I've been the chairman of all those branch boards. Yes. Excellent. Yes. So you have so, a wealth of experience um, in yeah. wealth. Surprisingly, last time, um, well, coincidentally, last time I was on the show, I remember I was put on the spot and asked the question, are you running for president this time <laughs> around? And I said I would make a decision within a week. Right? But a week after making the decision, I found out that I could not <laughs> run for president because I had been promoted to the rank of, of, ASP. of ASP. Imagine that. Yes. That's just so, how it um, is. So that's also my point to say goodbye to the Police Welfare Association. And I guess um, eventually my post on the regional federation is probably going to come to an end at some point um, this year also. But like I always say, like I always say, and you guys laugh at me when I say that. Welfare is in my heart. <laughs> to forget about welfare. Yes. I, need to get it, I need to get it out of my heart. And I don't think that's a very easy task. So um, whoever comes in, the advice, um, you need it. I'm, avail you need I'm available to work with you guys in, um, in, in, in any way that uh, you probably might need my assistance. Well said, ESP, well said. Um, well, here we go. Tomorrow will be the police association's elections. Um, let me ask you, ESP, how, how many candidates, uh, especially for the constable's branch board, how many candidates are vying for, for seats on the constable's branch board? For the constable's and branch like board, um, um, can you, can you um, put we up have, a we, we have, I think, 10, 10 persons. Elections poster. There we go. Yeah, I think we have ten persons here. Um, I don't know if um, it's easy if it's easy to read. Yeah, we have up on the screen. Uh, uh, well, I, I can, for me, for me, it's not. Well, not for you, <laughs> but I think I can see that we have uh, WPC fifty-seven uh, Nixon. Uh, we have WPC four in Leos, PC fifty Chico, uh, WSPC uh, is that sixty-five Gaston. Uh, we have W. Uh, SPC 288. Uh, man, I'm not seeing that properly. Hold on, but you know, it's a good thing. That's why uh, right. WSPC they, they that's tweeted, that's WPC 28 Daniel. Daniel, that's right. Uh, we also have Mr. Barry Charles there. Yes, yeah, that's PC 312. Am I correct? Yes, okay. We have PC 664 Williams. Uh, Mr. Steinsus Albert, you have Azario Foswa. Okay, thank you, my org. That's that's yes. excellent. Can you probably bring it up a little more? And we have, um, yes, we have Mr. Ron Chico. He's still running, and yeah. of course, we have our current president, Mr. Travis Chico. Now, Mr. Travis Chico, I hope he's listening. Um, we have PC three sixty Azario Foswa, um, Mr. Stances Albert, uh, six four nine William, and also our current president he's he was out for some time mr chico yes. he's now back home yeah he's back home. he's at, in home quarantine i believe and i know that he's listening i know that he's listening so hopefully we'll hear from president chico okay um so i see a couple of new faces um well not a couple i see like three new faces we have three new yes. faces there yeah and, and um, it's very good to see um, th this yeah. level of interest to serve in the welfare uh, of, of, of police officers, okay? Um, can you tell us, um, what is the construct? Because uh, what some people don't understand is, well, some, I want you to explain how does, how is the executive form? Okay. Yes, yes. So go ahead. So, what should happen and what normally happens is that the various there's a branch board for each rank. That's right. Okay. okay. The constable, so the, the corporal, constable, corporal, 
sergeant and inspector and inspector mm -hmm. so each branch board like with the exception of the constables branch board would consist of five persons mm -hmm. and with, for the constables branch board it would have been seven persons i see right so after voting for your best five or your favorite five i like to say favorite, favorite because five, not the i believe best. yes because um, it's a, it's a, yes. it's a democracy it's a um, it's a democracy and democracy is based on popularity right not necessarily the best yes democracy is based on popularity <laughs> yes so you <laughs> Uh, who knows yes, if yes. if democracy always um, voted the best I would have been the president a long time <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure Travis is um, listening and he'll call uh, in and, and speak about that yes yeah. um, I know I like to have those arguments with him too you know that yes um, <laughs> but yes so you vote for your favorite five I'll use the word favorite again yes uh, and in the case of the constable seven mm -hmm. now among the seven elected constables and the five for the other branch boards they would have decided who represents them at the central executive mm -hmm. so in terms of so for the constables there will be four persons going to the central executive and according to our laws one of which must be a female one must be a female yes and i guess um, 1965 mm -hmm. so you can imagine why a law like that would have been uh, maybe we should have said the um the said said the same thing for the band <laughs> in terms <laughs> of supervisors yeah, yeah, yes yeah. <laughs> should have put that law not now yes, yes um yes. then for the corporals there would be two persons going to the central executive one sergeant and one inspector the law also says one station sergeant but we have um i see yes we we do not we no longer we no longer have that rank in the royal Central police force so that makes the executive eight persons i see i see so just to so, recap we have four constables yeah. one must be a female. a female we have um a sergeant mm -hmm. an inspector and two corporals yes Okay, and I think currently um, we have two corporals vying, but that that will right. be automatic because it's only ex two. Ex ex exactly, okay. and I'm and I feel I feel a bit disappointed that 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 <laughs> we we did not have so many nominations this time around. For the, especially uh, the corporal rank. Yeah, not just corporal for all the other ranks. Um, if you look at the inspectors, mm -hmm. if you look at the sergeants, so it's like two corporals. It's two sergeants nominated, so we cannot have a full election. It makes no sense voting among two people to get five. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Yes, yes. Yeah, that's, that, that, that's pretty much impossible. So um, the two corporals naturally would find themselves on the central executive. Yeah, they will. Yes. And the information I, 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 I have received, it's Corporal 806 and Joseph, mm -hmm. our current press officer, and Corporal 785, um mario, mario chico. chico yes yeah yeah so um that's where we, we're at with elections i would have preferred to see at that point that all our branch boards are properly constituted mm -hmm. um that means we still need to do some we, need, we still need to do some work we still need to make um the executive a little more attractive and i think the last show which i appeared on here mm -hmm. i did we did we did raise that um that question as to why we did not have, we, we've not been having sufficient nominations. This time around, the nomination period has been ex had been extended at, at least three times. And we still don't have sufficient nominations. But at least we will have sufficient persons who can fill the positions on the central executive. Excellent. And, I, and just before we take the break, I believe in terms of the sergeant, it is um, Sergeant Xavier, uh, well, we have two we have two sergeants, have two sergeants um, that were nominated. So nominated. I guess um, among themselves, um, yeah. that decision will be made. Will be made. Okay. Yes, I don't see a, I don't see a difficulty there difficulty either. There. All right, excellent. All right, we're going to um, take our very first break, and when we come back, we'll be hearing from the candidates. Stay tuned to Police Insight.
Premium Free and the proud recipient of the 2018, 2019 and 2020 Grand Goldmon Selection Quality Award. Our choice is clear, crystal clear. The COVID vaccine is here and is for people 18 years and older. High risk healthcare workers, first responders, law enforcement, as well as people living with chronic conditions. And our seniors 65 and over. The vaccine is absolutely free. Usa registry online ebe a community center ki a community. Or with your private healthcare provider. Vaccinate for you. For me? For us. us. We are solution. Crystal, crystal. Sodium free and the proud recipient of the 2018, 2019, and 2020 Grand Gold Mon Selection Quality Award. Our choice is clear, crystal clear. Kalum Didier Foundation Inc., in collaboration with Inspire Me, presents a Mother's Day virtual telephone concert. On Sunday, the 9th of May at 4 30 p.m. Live stream on NBC Television, Facebook, and Instagram. Featuring Michael Robinson, Arthur, Ronald Buhingson, T.C. Brown, The Mighty Pep, Toriel, Ezra, Humper, and lots more. Entertainment by Shaq Fu Comedy King. And Toxic Wave Dancers. On Sunday the 9th of May at 4.30 p.m. Please support. Pledge to save the neonatal intensive care unit baby. Aging gracefully is the hope for everyone. But when you age prematurely, most people think that something is wrong with you. The natural enzymes and building blocks in your skin start to deplete. So fine or deep lines and wrinkles appear, making you look much older than you really are. At Derma Clinic, we can help repair your skin and change the way you look in minutes. These treatments will make you look younger. At Derma Clinic, we treat all kinds of skin problems, such as facial lines, dark circles around the eyes, crow's feet, and frown lines, using all-natural hyaluronic acid filler. So maintain and improve your facial appearance. For more information, call 453-6417 or 485-9818. Why are you suffering from aches, pains and illnesses? When there's help for you, at Health Service Centre, we offer a wide range of treatment that has been scientifically proven to help you with your aches, pains and illnesses. Our ICT machine is one of the most effective devices in the health field. It has shown positive results in many health problems, such as back pains, shoulder pains, migraine headaches, pain in the knees and legs, poor circulation, arthritis, diabetic neuropathy, numbness in the feet, strokes and sports injuries. ICT, repairs, rebuild. The power to heal, the future of pain relief. COVID-19 stigma will not protect you. I don't want that child playing with my child. He better stay away from me. Be kind during COVID-19. Follow all protocols. That is easy, I have no cure. Mika Gorilla. <laughs> Learn the facts about the virus. Me see him at that Me, I'm not working with any COVID person. She better stay away from me. Let's not turn fear into stigma. A message from the St. Lucia Red Cross. You're watching MBC. Welcome back to Police Insight, your host here, Sergeant Zachary Hippolyte of the Royal Central Police Force. In studio with me is Assistant Superintendent of Police, Mr. Curtis Roberts. Uh, until midnight, he is the Vice President of the 
Police Welfare Association as we are gearing up for the association's elections tomorrow. Tomorrow, people. Yes. And um, just for me to recap the name of the individuals going up for um, vying for a seat on the Constable's Branch Board. Um, it is WPC 57 Charlton Nixon, WPC 488 Mariana Leos, PC 50 Ron Chico, WSPC 66 Sayana Gastor, WSPC 288 Michelle Daniel, PC 312 Barry Charles, PC 649 William, PC 694 Travis Chico, PC 889 Stanislas Albert, and PC 6360 Azaria Foswa. And we have a, a voice note. Uh, well, we have uh, at least three of them, but we're going to start first with um, WSPC 288 Daniel Shane. Uh, WSPC 288 Daniel. Good evening, everyone. I am WSPC number 288, Michelle Daniel. I have worked from Central and now I am stationed at the Viewfort Police Station. I have 14 years of service in, this, in the organization. And uh, this evening, I am here to ask everyone to go out and vote in large numbers. Let your voice be heard. And... Uh, I am proud to be going up or vying for a seat on the Constable's Branch Board of the Police Welfare Association. Given the opportunity, I know that I can make a difference in what is going on in our organization. And I am very passionate about the plights for the special police constables. This being said, I am hoping that everyone goes out and exercises their right to vote. Vote for me as I lend my voice to the cause. Oh yes, she's lending her oh, voice to the oh, cause. Yes, yes. <laughs> what did you what did you think of that speech, that type of delivery? Oh, well, yes, I, I think it was good. But um, no, Miss Daniel herself, she's been a very good friend of um, the Welfare Association. Mm -hmm. She has been assisting us, especially with um, scholarships, scholarship um, applications, mm -hmm. and delivery of um, of school material um, for our scholarship program down in the south. Um, well along with um, Sergeant uh, Sil Silvina James. Mm -hmm. Yes, the two of them have been really Excellent. assisting us down there. So that, that um, Actually, I found it strange that Sergeant James um, was, was not a candidate. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, you yes, know they, they've, yes. been, they, they, yeah, they, yes. they, they've been such good friends of welfare. Of welfare. Yes. And they um, have that, that, that DNA of volunteerism in their yes, back. It's called exactly. the DNA of volunteerism. Right. So, yeah, you're correct. So, yes, yes. yes. I, well, well done, well, well done, Miss Daniel. Thank you so much for your your what would we call our election pitch. Uh, we're going to move right along to WPC fifty seven uh, Nixon. Let's hear it from Miss Nixon. Hello, my people. My name is Charlton Nixon, woman police constable five seven, attached to the Central Police Station. I am a senior police officer of 22 years. I am privileged to be nominated by my colleagues to represent them on the Police Welfare Association Secretariat. I know that I can make a meaningful contribution on behalf of my colleagues if given the opportunity to. Therefore, I ask that you go out and vote for whomever you believe will make a positive and meaningful contribution on your behalf. Go out and vote, people. Uh, thank, thank, thank you, Miss Nixon. Miss, listen to me. Uh, she has a very powerful, uh, 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 um, protruding and, and, and domineering voice. I, I nearly put an X there, you know, already, right? There. Yeah, right there, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And, and and I like I like I like that. She sounded like me when she said, "Vote for whoever you think." You know that that's yes. con that's confidence. That's confidence. Yeah, she didn't yes. just say, "Vote for me." Yes. Vote for whoever you think will represent your interest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think um, I think that's a very good thing. She she should be a politician. She should be a politician. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Nixon, the ASP believes there's a you know another level 
in your future. Maybe you should check this out. Thank you so much, WPC57. Yeah, Nixon. confidence. That's what yeah, yeah confidence. a lot of confidence. Yes. Um, um, we have, uh, let's see, we now have WPC488 Laos. Take it away, Shane. Community Relations Branch and the Crown Prosecution Service. Fellow colleagues, good evening. I am Mariana Leons, a 28-year-old veteran, senior police constable, number 488, attached to the Criminal Records Office. During my stint as a police officer, I have had the privilege of working within departments to include Criminal Investigations Department, Police Press Relations, Police Complaints Unit, Community Relations Branch, and the Crown Prosecution Service. Presently, I have placed myself on a lineup as a candidate for the Police Welfare Association. It is my intention to deliver effective representation and become an advocate for police welfare. I possess a wealth of experience within community relations, drug education, just to name a few. I have also served on two central police welfare executives under the administration of Mr. Martin James and Mr. Travis Chico. My experience and commitment can make a change, and it is for this reason I am encouraging you to come out Wednesday, 21st April, to cast your vote for me for effective change. Effective change. Yes, and <laughs> that, sound, that, sound, that, sound, that's, that also sounds really good. Um, good. One thing she did not mention, though, she was the very first office assistant at the Police Welfare Association Secretariat when we opened back somewhere 2004. On, on the, the, back um, in the day. Right, yes. Um, yeah. I think Mr. Vungard was the president at the mm -hmm. time. Yes, mm -hmm. she was the very first to a, work there with us. A lot of experience. In yeah, that's a lot of experience. Yeah, she's been around long enough. Yes, yeah, she's yeah. been long enough. You know, let's, let's, yeah. let's see what, what the organization, those who, who are supposed to vote, will think. We have three strong, powerful women. Um, you know what's amazing, ASP? Um, I'm aware because the invitation was sent um, to all the candidates, from what I was told, through our secretariat, to send you know a little election speech, a little speech, etc. And it's the the ladies, the, the, the ladies that have yes. responded. I've not heard from the guys. Guys, what's wrong with you? Maybe they're waiting for the lines to open, and maybe they'll they'll, they'll call in live. Well, uh, yeah, that might that might be an option for them. To, I, yeah, that's but, that's um, their strategy. Yeah, but. I'm, but, I'm, yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, to, to hear the ladies there tonight. Yes. I'm happy to see that they are, they are confident. And because the last, I think, we, we, we've had a female president before that was Rubinia Joseph. Yes, right? yes, we have. But yeah. was she the only I, ever? I'm not sure, but from since I've been a police officer, I think, yes. She was the only Yeah, ever. I'm not sure if there was any female president before her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's it. So, great job, great job, ladies, great job. Um, and if you're listening, you still have the opportunity to call in when we open up the lines, despite that you, you submitted your election pitch. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. I love the tonations of the voice and the confidence. Great, great job. ASP, so let's go, let's continue. So, some officers want to know what's happening tomorrow. How is it going to be? Where are the venues, the times, polling okay, stations? Okay, so we're going we're gonna to have the, our polling stations opening from 8 o'clock tomorrow. Voting will be from 8 o'clock a.m. Okay. to 3 p.m. 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Yes. Um, okay. we, we do not want to go up to, to the 6 p.m. and then to get ballot boxes up to castries. Mm -hmm. What we do not want is for the ballot boxes to have to stay over for counting on a, the following day. We want to make sure oh, that we do, the, we do the counting the evening. Mm -hmm. So by 4.30, between 4.30 and 5 o'clock, all ballot boxes should be in. Um, okay. Bear in mind that we come from as far as Soufre, Chouzel, those areas. So there will be, um, just at, well, as the rules say, the casting of ballots must be supervised by a Gazette, a Gazette officer or a justice of the peace. Well, our, all our Gazette officers are justices of the peace. So. <laughs> yes. yes. Um, so there will be a Gazette officer at each location. So we will have one box at Grozile, that's for Grozile and Babuno. Mm -hmm. um, those other departments within the Castries Basin, including Marshall Police Station, will be voting at Central Police Station. Um, 
Viewfort Library and the other departments within the Viewfort Basin will be voting at the Viewfort Police Station. Viewfort Police Station, okay. Yes, uh, Schwozel and Souffre will be voting at Souffre Police Station mm -hmm. and the ballot box will be moving to Schwozel Police Station at midday. Mm -hmm. So all voting will cease at 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock. Yes. Um, I would like to remind all our members to walk with your police ID when you are going to vote. We do not want to be accused of any voter fraud. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, that, that type of stuff. But yeah, walk with your ID when you're going to vote. Not every Gazette officer knows every constable or every, or every police officer for that matter. So, um, and... Yes, let us go out there. Don't, don't just sit back. We, we want to see change. Let's go out there and vote. Okay, there are persons offering themselves for service. Give them a feel as to how much support you have for them. That's the most I, that's the most I can say that's about, right. about voting. That's right. Um, Especially... Unfortunately, the corporal sergeants and inspectors won't be voting because of the number of nominations that they have. Nominations. So it's basically the constables. The constables. Remember, people... You are voting for seven constables out of ten. So any ballot paper that has more than, more than seven votes, or more than seven options, rather, mm -hmm. will be, requ will be um, regarded as a spoiled ballot. So you can vote from anywhere, anywhere from one to seven to persons. Seven. You don't so have, you have to choose. Yes, so you don't have. Ten, there are ten individuals. You yes, have to choose, choose seven. a maximum of, seven. maximum of seven. Yeah, if you want to vote for only one, it's no problem. If you want to vote for four, it's no it's problem. No problem. But not more than seven. So can I put eight, nine there? No. Spoiled. Yes. Okay. So, seven constables. Excellent. All right, we are going to take another break. When we come back, we're going to open up the lines. Hopefully, we will hear from the male candidates. Guys, come on. Letting the ladies outshine you, and then you know, we we'll probably get some calls from the public. We will be talking about everything, so you could ask us any questions. Stay tuned to Police Inside. Kalem Didier Foundation Inc. in collaboration with Inspire Me presents a Mother's Day virtual telephone concert on Sunday the 9th of May at 4.30 p.m. Live stream on NBC television, Facebook and Instagram. Featuring Michael Robinson, Arthur, Ronald Buhingson, T.C. Brown, The Mighty Pep, Toriel, Ezra, Humper, and lots more. Entertainment by Shaq Fu Comedy King. And Toxic Wave Dancers. On Sunday the 9th of May at 4.30 p.m. Please support. Pledge to save the neonatal intensive care unit baby. The COVID vaccine is here and is for people 18 years and older. High risk healthcare workers, first responders, law enforcement, as well as people living with chronic conditions. And our seniors 65 and over. The vaccine is absolutely free. In Sawa Gistri, online, Ebe, a community center, key, a community. Or with your private health care provider. Vaccinate for you. For me. For us. us. Boost your commercial success with NBC TV and NBC Social. Don't look back. Invest in your advertising. Reach your target audience at peak times and off peak times. We deliver strategically placed advertising spots at the most competitive rates. Also ask about our production services, which include television ad production, jingles and documentaries designed to suit your business needs. We also deliver classified ads designed for land sales, job opportunities and more. Advertise with NBC TV and NBC Social. Aging gracefully is the hope for everyone. 
But when you age prematurely, most people think that something is wrong with you. The natural enzymes and building blocks in your skin start to deplete. So fine or deep lines and wrinkles appear, making you look much older than you really are. At Derma Clinic, we can help repair your skin and change the way you look in minutes. These treatments will make you look younger. At Derma Clinic, we treat all kinds of skin problems, such as facial lines, dark circles around the eyes, crow's feet, and frown lines, using all-natural hyaluronic acid filler. So maintain and improve your facial appearance. For more information, call 453-6417 or 485-9818. Did you get the COVID-19 vaccine? Then you may experience one or a combination of side effects, or even no side effects at all. Side effects may include pain or tenderness in the area where you got the vaccine. You may also notice a little swelling or redness. To manage these, you may apply a clean, cool, wet washcloth or an ice pack over the area. Throughout your body, you may feel chills, fever, nausea, joint pain, tiredness, headache, or muscle pain. To manage this discomfort, you should get plenty of rest. Drink fluids, but avoid alcohol and caffeine. If you need to manage pain, you may take paracetamol, not aspirin. You may continue to take all medications prescribed for you, for your health condition. Vaccinate. For you. For yours. For us. To Police Insight, your host, Sergeant Zachary He Police of the Royal Sinisha Police Force. In studio with me, ASP Curtis Roberts, current Vice President until midnight of the <laughs> Police Welfare Association. Let me just see if I can get in some um, contributions from the Facebook chat. Uh, let's see, let's see. Someone is saying, uh, Miss Leos is my president. Um, another individual, oh wow, I like this one. Someone said, Queens, Queens. So, you know, they, they, they really feel in the, the energy and the commitment and passion from our ladies. Another individual said, Miss Leos for president. Um, I'm on vacation, so I have to go all the way to the grocery police station to vote. Yes, most probably you do, officer. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Okay. There's also a discussion about a particular investigation, which we cannot go in right now. Those of you in the chat, the matter is being investigated. So let us just allow the investigation to continue and hopefully we will see. I would like to say good night to Don Mary McDonald, saying a great program. Good night to you. Thank you for watching. She's in the US. We're going to open up the lines for five. 33911 I'm hoping I will hear from the male candidates. Maybe they, that's their strategy. ESP. Maybe they said, you know, I'm not sending in any voice note. I'm going to just call live and send in my pitch. 4533911. You could also WhatsApp me on 7200401. 7200401 as we continue the interview and conversation with my guest. Um, can ex-police officers vote? No, they can't. They're no longer members. They're no longer serving members. They're no longer serving members. Yes. But one would say but some of them still um, um, contribute to the fund of the Welfare Association. Okay, well, yes. Um, remember, the Welfare Association is not a, du is not a dues um, paying mm -hmm. association. The funds that are being collected are for, partic are for particular purposes. Ah, okay. Right, so... They make those contributions and they continue to 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 reap the benefits, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. get the rewards of this of, of, of contributing to those funds. Excellent. So, okay, I have a question on the WhatsApp texting platform. Can corporal votes for constables? No, you should only um and it's a good thing that question was raised. Um you can only vote for someone at for the representative on your branch board, the someone at your rank. Mm -hmm. So the SPCs 
and the constables will be voting for the constables or SPCs because cons constables and SPCs form the same branch board. Okay. Right? So corporals can only vote for corporals, sergeants for sergeants, inspectors for inspectors. Excellent, excellent. Um, what happens, ASP, um, after, after the tallying, counting of the votes? I don't think that will ever happen, but what if all the candidates have the same amount of votes? <laughs> have you ever thought of that? I don't know. I'm just thinking um, out of the box. But what happens if that... Well, it never... That, 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 never, that, that never, never really um, crossed my mind. I've never known it to happen. Um, we've had some persons with ties, but... Mm -hmm. Um, we've had persons who tie at the bottom, we've had persons who tie <laughs> at the, the top, top, but nowhere on the borderline, okay. you know, so, um, but what I, what, what I see, what I foresee happening is a re-election, uh, or, you know, you recall, okay. or you, you find some sort of a tiebreaker yeah. um, for, for, um, between those two individuals, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yes, yeah, so, or, well, if you say all of them, um, for that matter, <laughs> I don't know how. yeah, I, yeah, and we, I guess just to, because it has never it. occurred, I guess, you know, yeah, and you know, usually when you have a re-election, good sense prevails. Yeah, definitely. Um, or sometimes it's love too. Like I said, you vote for your favorite. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, the lines are open four five three three nine one one four five three three nine one one, and the chat is still a buzz with a particular investigation that is going on. Uh, yes, the, the yes people, um, you know, but it's 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 happening. It's 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 occurring. So let's just wait and see what will be the outcome of that particular investigation. Um, as the um, could you speak? Well, I'm on the executive of the of the Police Welfare Association. I'm the outgoing secretary, but tonight I'm the host. So passing everything over <laughs> to the vice president. Can you speak to the the challenges? of the outgoing executive you know um we've run our tenure um what what what, what you would think what would you see for some memorable challenges um, well for me first off we look at um, the changes we had to go through with covid it was a very difficult time for for most of our members mm -hmm. um, in one way or the other. And I think we discussed that on the previous show, mm -hmm. right? My previous appearance on the show sometime earlier this year. This year. Um, so that's one of them. There were other, there are other issues we did, not, we, we did not successfully get uh, rectified. You know, we have the issue with um, some of the SPCs and the, 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 the terms of employment now that they are at a particular age about to hit retirement and now making that claim that they should have been there or should I say for the time they were employed that their terms of service should have been different you know we have that um, mm -hmm. we've not been able to successfully yeah yeah we, we've been we've been working Special we've been battling reason. with it and not just yeah. our executive successive 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 executives mm -hmm. have been battling with it for a while we then we look at some of we look at our entire program was disrupted last year, yes. and um, I must say we had a really packed program we last did, year. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, we did. We had a main event activities. every for every for each yeah. quarter, mm -hmm. and we had other activities in between, even our fundraising and everything. But we had um, a, was, also had a raffle. Am I correct? Yes, um, that um, I guess Mr. Chico chairing the yes. committee could give us a better insight on that. Um, yeah, yeah but in. it's, a, it's a case where it was not, um, should I say, it was not supported as it was, as promised. As promised, yes, expectations um, were we'll not met. To do that yeah, too. so that's one of them. And we look at the other social activities we had. We had so, um, events like, um, annually we have the, the Randy Abbott football competition. Mm -hmm. We have, um, well, we're supposed to have the second memorial ride for Sylvanus Lesmond. I mean, you could remember the very first one, how, how well attended it was and how well supported it was. We had, you could have sworn it was the, independent, the, the, the normal independence ride, you know, that would have been, and I was told by the then commissioner that last year would have been even bigger. Yeah, yes, then we're supposed yes. to have the inaugural Alvin Edmonds cricket competition. Mm -hmm. Um, that was one that lots of persons looked forward to, especially our 
retired police officers who played who played cricket um, for the police cricket team, um, the police all stars. I was well, I was looking forward to seeing my team, the police all stars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, um, but there are some good players in there, um, past players like um, like Sheldon Fop and um, our national security minister. Um, our former commissioner, Mr. Fasua, um, guys like Ken Tommy, like Mr. Andrew Stanislas, we had all these guys ready to, to join that team. And, mm. and I mean, yeah, we, you want to you wanna say, well, these guys are veteran now. Yeah, and, I, I, I was and we have these youngsters see. to play. Yeah, but, man, you know. You know, <laughs> you see, it's, it's really nice to see the, the, the skill coming out. So win or lose, yeah. it's a win win for them because they get, to, they get to exercise, they get to put out, the, they get to show off their skill. They get to enjoy the game, and it's in honor of one of their very good friends, you know. So, yeah, it's something that um, we looked forward to. Um, again, we cancelled very early. We cancelled the rainforest walk. Yes, I yes, think. I'm um, looking forward to that. I think I said that on the last show, but yes, the police, even before COVID protocols were put in place, the police was the very first to start cancelling their activities, their social activities. I think you'd remember that. I remember yes. that very well. Um, yeah, so there were, um, even with the timing of elections, I think um, COVID did affect the timing of elections too. And, you know, our EGMs and that kind of stuff. So a lot, a lot happened um, within, within, within that um, for, the last, uh, for, the last, for the last year. But um, my, my heart still bleeds for those SPCs. Who, yeah. who sound like they are almost nowhere in terms of what their benefits were supposed to be. Um, because guess what? I, I was an SPC in that era. What if I had remained an SPC all those years? Probably, well, I never intended to, but <laughs> what if I did remain an SPC um, all those years? Exactly. You know, would I, be, would I suffer that very same fit when I get to retirement age? You know, so yeah, uh, that's one of the that's yeah, that's one of the big points. Yeah, and it, and it has and, and, and it has been it, it has been a challenge for successive mm -hmm. executives and the one to come and the one to come. And I can tell them very early that they can expect to get some sort. I'll not say pressure, but complaint some that issue being raised again. So. I can safely tell them that this is one problem that they are going to inherit. Um, at least um, they can take the talks from where we have left off. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and it's nice to see that there are some persons who have been on, pre on previous executives vying for those positions again. So they might have a bit of knowledge as to how far we've gotten with those talks. I have a message here from the WhatsApp platform. Good evening. Um, as okay, ASP, does the Gazette officer have to sign the ballot papers? I think it's just like, like in, in our real elections, I think the presiding officer after you, yes, you we, vote. But would the Gazette officer in our election have to sign the ballot paper? Yes, the ballot paper has to be signed before it is given to the, to the voter. To the voter. Because we would okay. not want to sign it after, we not want to see where you vote anyway. Exactly, <laughs> yes. yes, yes. So yeah. definitely, yes, the Gazette officer. Um, doing the job of the presiding officer, like in a real election, would sign the ballot paper before it's given to the individual to vote. I also have another message here from a viewer. Um, next election, I would like to see every police officer vote for the president of their choice and not the branch board electing the president. Okay. Well, we will have to change the. We will have le we'll have to change legislation in that in, in that regard. So we will have to change the rules that govern the welfare association. Um, you know that's not very easy. I mean, there's been one simple change we wanted to make to include an additional sergeant. Remember, I remember on, that. since uh, there is no uh, since there's no station sergeant anymore, the sergeant is the one doing that job. So we wanted to include one additional sergeant on the executive. And we've not been successful at getting that changed. Um, maybe it's something we could probably advise the, 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 the incoming executive um, to follow up on. 
because we've because the strides have been made in that regard excellent okay we're going to take another break ladies and gentlemen stay tuned to police insight get the COVID-19 vaccine? Then you may experience one or a combination of side effects, or even no side effects at all. Side effects may include pain or tenderness in the area where you got the vaccine. You may also notice a little swelling or redness. To manage these, you may apply a clean, cool, wet washcloth or an ice pack over the area. Throughout your body, you may feel chills, fever, nausea, joint pain, tiredness, headache, or muscle pain. To manage this discomfort, you should get plenty of rest, drink fluids, but avoid alcohol and caffeine. If you need to manage pain, you may take paracetamol, not aspirin. You may continue to take all medications prescribed for you, for your health condition. Vaccinate. For you. For yours. For us. Aging gracefully is the hope for everyone. But when you age prematurely, most people think that something is wrong with you. The natural enzymes and building blocks in your skin start to deplete. So fine or deep lines and wrinkles appear, making you look much older than you really are. At Derma Clinic, we can help repair your skin and change the way you look in minutes. These treatments will make you look younger. At Derma Clinic, we treat all kinds of skin problems, such as facial lines, dark circles around the eyes, crow's feet, and frown lines, using all-natural hyaluronic acid filler. So maintain and improve your facial appearance. For more information, call 453-6417 or 485-9818. Kalem Didier Foundation Inc in collaboration with Inspire Me, present Say Mother's Day virtual telephone concert. On Sunday the 9th of May at 4.30 p.m. Live stream on NBC television, Facebook and Instagram. Featuring Michael Robinson, Arthur, Ronald Buhinkson, T.C. Brown, The Mighty Pep, Tori L, Ezra, Humper, and lots more. Entertainment by Shaq Fu Comedy King. And Toxic Wave Dancers. On Sunday the 9th of May at 4.30 p.m. Please support. Pledge to save the neonatal intensive care unit baby. Boost your commercial success with NBC TV and NBC Social. Don't look back. Invest in your advertising. Reach your target audience at peak times and off peak times. We deliver strategically placed advertising spots at the most competitive rates. Also ask about our production services, which include television ad production, jingles and documentaries designed to suit your business needs. We also deliver classified ads designed for land sales, job opportunities and more. Advertise with NBC TV and NBC Social. vaccine is here and it's for people 18 years and older. High risk healthcare workers, first responders, law enforcement, as well as people living with chronic conditions. And our seniors 65 and over. The vaccine is absolutely free. In Sawaji Street, online, a community center key and community. Or with your private health care provider. Vaccinate for you. For me? For us. us. back to Police Insight, your host, Sergeant Zachary Hippolyte, in studio with me, ASP 
Curtis Roberts. The lines are open for 533 You could also WhatsApp me on the texting platform 7200401. But before we continue, um, we have a call? Okay. Um, you know, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start also a, a new series of videos. Um, Nabil, did you know? So we're going to start tonight. Shane, I think you have that video. Are you ready? Okay, let's... Thank you so much. <clears throat> and that video was um, um, presented, produced by the cop who cares, <laughs> Sergeant Matthew of the Grosley Police Station. Thank you. And every every time, every um, Tuesday, we're going to bring out, you know, another new video. We're going to produce a video with um, information, little tidbits, things that you should know. Okay? Did you know series? And, and somebody asked about the, the, the protocols, the new protocols. They wanted to make sure... Um, the updated version of it. Well, I have a few here. Let me just quickly go through it. ASP. Um, okay, special events, boat excursions for up to 10 persons. Okay, boat excursions for up to 10 persons. This is only permissible for crewed yacht charters and family boaters. Excursion plans must be reported to the lighthouse ahead of the journey. Absolutely no day boat party charters will be allowed. Absolutely no day boat party charters will be allowed. What else we have here? Restriction on social gatherings. Social gatherings are restricted to no more than 10 people um, of the immediate family. In public and private settings, individuals are encouraged to limit their contact as much as possible and adhere to all necessary protocols, as well as mindful to general hygiene procedure. No allowance is given for mass gathering social events of any kind or loud music permits. And I want to tell the individuals with the vehicles who like to pass in the communities with their very loud amplified sound. That also applies to you. It applies to you. You know, it's very annoying, you know? And we need to make an example of a few of you, you know? It's really annoying. So when you have your, your amplified sound in your vehicle, don't pack it somewhere and expect that because it's my car, you know, it's okay to play amplified sound. No, my brother, it isn't. And you will be challenged by the police. Also, we have a business operating hours. All businesses, all business operations and commercial activities shall cease operation at 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. So people, it is still 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. daily as guided by curfew enforced through the state of emergency. Daily curfew remains from 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. until May 16th. 2021 okay people until may 16th 2021 and the last one i'm seeing here schools are allowed in class training and instruction schools are allowed strict protocols and regulations issued by the ministry of health and ministry of education's uh continuity plan for schools in solution to operate safety on a specified system at that point in time i'll say good night to all teachers i know the anxiety you gotta do what you gotta do sergeant small Silent Small, good night to you. Silent Small say is ready to to um, vote. <laughs> um, Shane, check the phone again. Uh, someone said they're trying to get the lines, but um, they keep getting cut off. Could you try again? Call her 4533-911, 4533-911. But they said they keep getting cut off. I'm not too sure why. And Maybe give, what I should do is try calling your phone. And, and give Bella a shout. Yes. Oh, and definitely back to the facebook chat bellas justina bellas good night to you i see all your messages 
I know, and this is one of, like what you've been speaking about in terms of the situation with the special police. Yes, officer. yes. She's a victim of that, isn't she? Yes, she is. Yes, yes. she's one of them. She's and one I think of them. she's she's still for a very long time. Yeah, she's probably ten years more than me. So I'm like twenty four years service. So she's probably about thirty something. From what I'm reading there, she said, "I joined the Royal Sinisha Police Force in April 1987. Now serving thirty four years service, and sad to say, we're still at the bottom of the scale. So sad." 34 years of service from 1987. Yes. Justina Benassa. Yeah, She's a special police counsel. I she she stands out. I remember her clearly. Mm -hmm. Um she was a traffic warden when I came in. I remember yeah, yes, when I yes. came in, she was a traffic warden. Uh, yes. Yes. Good night. Good night to you, Miss Bellas. Oh yes, definitely my sister. We, my dear friend. We have little arguments every now and then, but we're <laughs> friends, yes. <laughs> okay. So what about the the achievements? And I don't know why we're not getting through to the phones. Um, just now ASP, let me, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try calling, I'm going to, I'm actually calling my own show. Let me see what happens there, because I, to see if we have a problem. Ladies and gentlemen, first time ever I'm calling my own show. So, so, so something is wrong, Shane. Please check the number and dial Something is wrong. Okay, so. Yeah, we have a problem with the phone, sadly. Yes, um. Probably you could try calling me on WhatsApp and probably I could just put the mic towards the phone. This is President Chico is trying to get through. Okay. Yeah, President Chico is trying to get through. Um, try calling me on WhatsApp, Brother Chico. Let me see if I could... Um, let me see. Yeah, the idea is good, I think. Brother Chico, you there? Hey, how you doing? Hi there, can we hear him? Whoa. Shane, are we hearing him now? Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, Go ahead, brother. Oh, I lost it. I lost it. I don't know why the phone lines are problem this tonight. Hey, good evening. Good evening. Good evening, brother Chico. How are you doing? I'm, I'm good, man. What's up with you? I'm fine. I, I hope people could hear us in, in TV land. I'm here with you. I'm in you. I'm in you loud and clear. And you could hear yourself? Well, I'm on mute because I don't want to pick up the feedback. Okay, so okay, so talk to us, President. Yes, um, I just want to first off, I want to just first off start by, um, you know, um, Congratulating you and um, Brother Robert, you know, I want to say that it was a pleasure or it has been a pleasure serving with you gentlemen. Um, I must indicate that, um, I mean, as a young man, I learned a lot from the two of you guys in terms of where, where, we, where we separate passion from from our personal feelings and, and, and whatnot. But um, today, today resonated well with me in terms of... Um, in, in, in to, at police welfare. Today I listened to Dr. Adrian Oje as he delivered his address in the in the Senate today in, in, in Parliament. Uh, and um it he, he basically highlighted the vision of the of the of the police welfare association in our tenure of service. And he and, and, and as I write as he rightfully said he spoke to the socioeconomic which was something that the welfare association was really had behind in terms of really raising the socio-economic standard of police officers and um, we really tried our best in terms of Im implementing one the new retirement fund with the police credit union the new investment fund with the police credit union we also looked at insurances where police officers would have greater benefits raising the bracket of in terms of being covered financially um, we moved to another another key area of, 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 of policing and in terms of national security. And we must understand that the police still remains the sole apparatus responsible for, 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 for protecting the, 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 the interest of St. Lucian as it pertains to crime and security. And we looked at housing and the Police Welfare Association negotiated again successfully with the police credit union as we look at purchasing property or, or being a 
key stakeholder as we look to provide affordable housing, not just for the police, but for 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 for, for our members and, and also the protective services. Then one of the one of the key areas that we we we, we have not made too much headway, but there was a, a good dent as we look at education, comrades, mm -hmm. and, and 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 education. And, and Dr. Adrian Oji rightfully said today, education must be tied with economics. And when you tie education with that field, you look at bringing police officers into a higher pay bracket. And this was a vision of the Police Welfare Association where we encourage our members to successful negotiations with universities of the University of the West Indies. We also found a, good, a great agreement with Monroe College. And now we know that we have the continued conversations with Walden University. And the Welfare Association holistically who holistically have looked into those directions where we better or we look to better the vision or, or the, 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 the views of police officers. I know one of the issues for us still remains a bitter issue, which is our senior SBCs. And um, I, I am aware of, 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 of certain movements, certain movements and, and certain commitments by various individuals, and we're hoping that these people can really... Um, Continue, continue the conversations and, and to make it happen. As we all know that, you know, those persons have given the, the all, those persons have given the all to, to welfare source, to the police force. And, and our, our, our only form of, of, of repayment, our only form of, of, of recognition to them is to provide them, is to provide them the, what, what is due unto them in terms of some, something that they could take home at the end of the day. Um, it is not an easy, it is not a clear-cut situation. It was a conversation that commenced prior to COVID, and we know when COVID came in, a lot of financial or, or conversations that would have economic implications on the police would have had to be um, slowed down. And as we write fully, we are aware that as of first they were supposed to get a salary increase, and 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 we've not we're not even sure onto the conversation as it pertains to that. So the Welfare Association, I think, is 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 heading in the right direction, and it is it is a pleasure to see the the, the cadre of members who have given themselves up to serve. Because you know, one of the challenges we have is that police welfare, basically, you are giving your all, and 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 there is no financial return for your service, and it takes a lot for you to put up your personal business to come into service. And I must indicate that that the team, the team, whoever forms the seven come tomorrow, whoever forms the seven come tomorrow, will, I am totally confident that, that they, they, they lack nothing. They are experienced enough and, and they can, once they put their heads together, that you should see more movement within the rank and file of the Police Welfare Association. So, so comrades, I must say that even, even as you are on the heels of the party, Yes. the Welfare Association in, in service. I, I, on behalf of the, the executive, want to want to thank you, gentlemen, for, for really steadying the ship with experience and seniority. And, um, you know, Zach, you, you, you would understand the, our lengthy conversations in the evening, yes. especially when sometimes you felt that, that we should not rule with passion, but rather we should always wait and allow good sense to prevail. So, so... So we, so we did we did see that and I want to just let you know that it was a pleasure and I, I count it a privilege that I that I was able to rub shoulders with you guys. But and um, you I'm sure I'm go. pretty sure before you go, I still have a question to ask you. Because that message yes. came in very earlier during the day on Facebook when I promoted the show. And in the video I wanted to know did you not make some form of announcement that you would not go up again and you want to know why you decided to put your heart in the ring again? Okay, definitely, Zach. Um, that, is, that is a simple question that I can answer. Okay. Um, you know we had struggles. We, there, were, there, were many, there were many struggles to fool the branch board and I was called by the very same people who are on the list today to, 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 fill, in, to fill in a, a nomination form because they were skeptical that we would not even been able to have a seven. And um, I, 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 I tell people that all the time, service, my passion to serve the Welfare Association is not for any 
any any benefit is not for any anything persons persons have indicated that i've gotten a scholarship from the government and i want to let members know that this is nothing but a rumor and i travis chico has received no benefits for the work that i have done within the welfare association and my only benefit is the satisfaction that we have delivered and, 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 I, and I think if anybody can, can judge us based on what has happened with the police welfare association it is a clear it is right there it is in forward it is in the forefront that members can judge us not on our conversations or on our talk but they can judge us on our performance as an association okay, so, so this is the only reason I would have come back members advised me that they would not have filled in the branch board and, and, and the members came back to me and said look Chico you should come in you, you, you're still young you could still come and serve we still we can still work with you so this is this is why and, and, and I, 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 I I have no issues I have, it is not about power, Brother Zach. It's not about holding on to any, 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 any office. But rather, I see myself as a servant of the people because, one, I genuinely love police officers. And, 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 and this is the sole reason that, that when I was approached, I made the decision. Thank you, comrade. Thank you, my brother. No problem. And it seems the other candidates have been trying to call in. Yes, but... Uh, but the problem is the line. Let me see if I could get at least Mr... Um, Stan, Mr. Stan says Albert have been trying to call in. Hold on, eh? At least I could give him the opportunity also. Let me see if I get him there. Mr. Albert? Yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Stanislaus. How are you doing, sir? I'm not too bad. Okay, well, it seems we had an issue with, with the main lines. Um, we are about to wrap up, but I want to give you the opportunity since you said you were trying to call. So go ahead, you're live. Yeah. Um, I was just calling to clarify an issue. With regards to the information pertaining to the voice notes that was sent, Mm -hmm. um, the, inf the information was passed on to me by another one of the persons who was fine for, who was fine for elections also. And not by the second um, No. Okay. I decided, I, dec I, I got the information, but I decided not to make a voice note. Um, for one reason. I was one of those who had said that I would not have thrown my hand back in the race. Mm -hmm. But eventually... I was approached by a few persons um, and they pressured me into getting back into the race, which finally I gave in. Okay. And I have, and from there on, I've said to myself that I'm not going to do anything that looks like campaigning. Um, over the past two years, I've worked on the outgoing executive, along with yourself and ASB Roberts and Chico and everybody else was on that executive and whatever it was that we did throughout our tenure as executive members i am prepared to stand for it so okay. what i'm saying is that let the work that we have done be what judges me and if persons want to vote for me fine if they do not want to i don't have a problem with that okay so that's why i i decided not to do a voice note Okay, my brother. Excellent. Short and sweet. So, <laughs> like, like I said, let our work as the previous executive judge my path forward. Thank you so much, my brother. Thank you for trying to reach yeah. out. Yeah, now it's PC Stanislas. Okay, well, we're about to wrap up. So, um, ASP, can you give quickly, briefly, advice for the incoming executive? Well, yes, of course. Um, there's always advice that you could give. Um, first, I need to say, I want to see some strong leadership in the PWA. Uh, leadership not just about who the president is, mm -hmm. but about how well the executive can pull on the branch boards and pull the resources together and move forward. Okay, move in that direction that members need to see you moving and need to feel you moving. I also need to say to them, you need to have a backbone. 
also. Mm -hmm. Yes, we deal with a democracy, but there are times you need to you, you, you need to you need you need to you need to be very confident in what you do. Not arrogant, but confident in what you do. You need to be able to act from a point of knowledge and a point of belief rather than a point rather than acting from your ego or sometimes being like a puppet and allowing your membership to just drive you into doing something you know to be wrong or something you do not you do not believe to be right should i say okay um you need to be tough you should be able to take the leaks like they say your back must be large Leaks from everywhere. Yes, media, media politicians, politicians your, your own se senior officers, your own colleagues, the same persons you represent, those on the executive with you, you will get it. You will be accused of all sorts of things. Okay, it's just as, it's just as sometimes it gets just as bad as being a politician. You know, you will make certain decisions Sometimes you decide, okay, listen, we, we deliver for democracy. 80% say yes, 20% say no, we need to go with the 80%. That 20% will still call you all sorts of names, They'll say all sorts of things about you, They'll call you a sellout, call you the S word, all sorts of stuff. That's, that's what happens with staff associations and trade unions. They're just as bad as political parties sometimes. Yeah, so, guys, you all are gonna be there, some of you. You gotta be tough. You gotta work together. Um, I always say the campaigning is one stage. As soon as that's done, we are ready. And um, the campaign is not even as bad as what I see happening around the Caribbean because some of the some of the um, some of our sister associations they have they actually have parties just yeah, like a, just like just like, yeah just like political parties and i like it honestly yeah. i like the hype Maybe you know, the that especially part. at the regional level when i look i see um places like the bahamas and saint vincent you know these guys tell you okay this is this person's team this is that team this is whatever party trinidad these places they do that and i like the hype what i want to see is that regardless of what form our campaigning takes when you get there, you are ready to work. Okay, so you're not going in there for a fight. There's no, um, there's no opposition party there to fight with you. So you are you support you you are there to work and you need to work together. Uh, that's something that's something I need to see there. Okay, regardless of you, it's not about who you work with because you're not working for anybody else except well apart from your your membership, and they have elected you. They've elected you to to work simple people if you know you cannot take the leaks do not come in you know like like my trainee friend does say you can't play mass if you're afraid powder that's right. simple yeah, yes powder. yes so but guys things. i hope we have a good election and good luck to our new branch board members as of tomorrow good luck to our incoming executive and this is where I say goodbye to the PWA. Excellent. Yes. <laughs> and from 8, 8 a.m., right? Yes. Okay. So thank you, ASP Roberts. Um, you're still the vice president until midnight. Um, yes, definitely. Um, officers, come out tomorrow. The constables, um, come out tomorrow from 8 a.m. Um, to cast your ballots. Um, we have a, an amazing um, cadre of police officers for you to choose from. Um, we heard from a few, uh, but I know for sure from tonight until tomorrow, there will be a lot of calls and individuals who do what they have to do to get their voices out there. I have been in welfare for a long time, not as long as the ASP, but I've been there a long time. My advice is very simple. Do not put yourself up for service if you're not ready to give in the work. There are some individuals who put themselves up for service just so that probably two years later, it could be on their CV that they were part of the police welfare executive or the association. If you know that's what you're coming in to do, don't do it. It's not fair to those who are actually in there to give up their time. As police officers, we already have a lot of work to do. Just know when you're in the executive, if you make it there, you have extra work to do. So your time, you have to have a lot of time management skills. And the other one that is a pet peeve for me, 
leave your political rhetoric or whatever it is out of the police welfare executive yeah because when you are going to negotiate with the government is on behalf of your colleagues on behalf of the police okay and you must go there with that mindset that that is your job so keep your own political biases away from the work the good work of the police welfare executive that's what i wanted to say so anyway that's it for tonight until next tuesday stay safe good night